Bro, we just got done watching FIBA. You know, honestly, bro, I didn't even watch the, the final game. I woke up at 3.30 to watch Team USA play Team Canada. And mm. I don't know who won FIBA. Do you know who won FIBA, Dave? Uh, yes, Germany. Germany. Germany beat, okay. They beat Germany Serbia. beat Serbia. Wow. It was a six-point game. All right. Well, congratulations to Dennis Schroeder, former Thunder player. Um, they overcame quite a bit to win there. So how about that, dude? But... The U.S. and Canada, that third place game was a hell of a game. That's the one we watched. We got to hang out with some of our friends living in Australia who also were cheering for Team Canada. Um, Bro, let's just talk about it. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. First of all, one of the moments that I have a lot of pride on, Mark, you brought it up beforehand, but then you just brought it up again, was Team Australia. Team Australia. Australians were cheering for Canada. You know, like... Um, you know, we, we had uh, a moment where uh, we had a um, uh, fellow service member, Mark, you brought it up, um, that was on the show. Um, and he said that we, being Canada, you know, like, to me, that means something. And I was telling Mark just before when he brought this up and, and said our, our buddy, uh, Dope, uh, he was basically like, I, I felt something there. Because, it, you know, it, it's, it's powerful, Mark, if you think about it. Sam Presti has made Oklahoma City into this melting pot of sorts of different countries, of, of, of different ideas of how basketball is played. If you look at Serbia, you know, you look at Australia, you look at America, there's all these different ideas of how to play the game. And he's brought them all into Oklahoma City. And instead of us watching a tournament like this, a FIBA, or watching uh, the Olympics, and we're cheering for the, only the United States, we have the ability and, and the opportunity now as fans to be able to cheer for every single country that has our players in it and when we watch these countries we say we we say us because australia men's basketball team means something to us canada um can the canadian men's basketball team means something to us it's no longer them versus the united states it's us and it's a global idea it's not just this one idea of saying oh yeah 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 you know, you might United States versus the world. Like we don't, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for us as in general, as a human population to be able to cheer for different countries because of the most powerful thing, basketball, bringing everybody together. It's beautiful, man. It is beautiful. And I find myself becoming a bigger fan of the German style of the game and mm -hmm. the Serbian style of the game. <sighs> Serbian is Latvian crazy. Style of the game. And like just so many of, things going on that was amazing but um speaking of serbia one of the things that got us really excited was our new player Mitic, would have been playing for team serbia but and they could have used him but he's preparing for the nba <clears throat> excuse me the nba yeah what does that mean to you dude well I, anytime that you see a team like serbia do so well <laughs> and really their two best players not play it tells me something you know something in the water is really fucking good right there and teaching the game. If you watch the Serbian coach, I love the Serbian coach, man. The way he was able to coach and, and, and chill out, like there's something special about what's happening in Serbia. And if I'm there and I'm looking at it, I want to know why. You know, why are these players like Poku coming out and uh, the Joker and Mischic and, and why, what's happening here? You know, like we saw so many other players for Serbia just do some great things. But if you look at Mischic and, and a lot of people say, well, Mischic was too good for the NBA. Um, I, I think there's a mentality that goes along with the NBA that some players have it and some players don't. And for the longest time, you've got to want the NBA. And so in order to want the NBA, you have to be willing to do what it takes. And Mischief, for whatever reason, for whatever happened, for whatever circumstance it was, in the way that people look at it is he didn't want to be in the NBA enough. And now he does. And he's going to be in Oklahoma City. And, and I don't know if anybody really truly understands his impact in Oklahoma City. His contract's not big. His contract's not heavy. And he could be easily outplaying his contract just by being on the floor for 20 minutes a game. So, I mean, what does that mean for Oklahoma City? Does it mean that, you know, we're getting to that point where we're going to have to have five guys on the court that can be point guard and that can rotate around who's point guard? Yeah, why not? I mean... Are we going to have uh, five guys that can get the ball, the rebound, and get the ball up the court immediately? Yeah. I mean, like, this is, I mean, Mistrich is no, I mean, he's not a chump on defense. He's definitely not a chump on offense. And he runs a, the, the offense in a way that uh, is really powerful. You put him next to Josh Giddy and Shea, 
J Dub. I mean, it's over. Teams are going to scratch their head and say, "How are we going to stop this?" Because it's not about who's going to score that bucket. It's about the unselfish play that we you bring into the thing, going right to the easiest shot, guy under the bucket for a dunk, or wide open three in the corner, or the drive that causes somebody to trip and fall in wide open shot at the um at the corner. You know, like there's so many things that we do to the bring to this table that Mischich just fits in so well, and it's just it's a beautiful thing, man. For sure. Um, well, I'm proud of us. We got five minutes into this episode and we haven't once said, I told you so. But maybe this is a good time to maybe like five minutes and 36 seconds is good, bro. You did. Good yeah, job. let's go ahead and um, <laughs> pull the whole pigsty thing and, and wallow in our own selfish bro, nastiness. I, I'm sorry. I know I piss off a lot of people, um, especially that. Um, I don't forget their names. That, that right. Spurs one, but anyways, that's when we said that it, there's Edward not a chance. Fans. Yeah, there's not a chance that uh, USA wins a uh, um, gold medal, a FIBA, or even a medal at that. Uh, we were called delusional and stupid. But the point about that is, we we made that assumption just because we looked at the team and, and the we team. sat there and we said, if we were building a team, you know, wh- which of these players would we pick? And I think we looked at it when we looked at it and we said we'd probably have three or four of these guys, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, and you look at that and you say, how in the world can you have a team that is built in that most people in the NBA that watch the NBA in a regular would only pick three or four of those guys to be on that team? You know, like, come on. Like, that was, I, and, and there all. There was a trash team, bro. They, they had some good players. I, I'm sure there the was team was that, just, there was no cohesiveness. But like, I, I'm sure there's reasons like Jimmy Butler was too tired and da, 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 you know? Oh, but yeah. Like, yeah, but I like, know. But my point about that is, is that like. That's when you go to what 2010 did, and you go uber young players that aren't necessarily re, you know defined in their roles. What and, up, Jaden? Yeah, and, and Ant, dude. Like as much as I want to like talk trash about Ant, this was he was picked for the wrong role. That was Grant Hill's fault yeah, putting was, him in that it was role. Steve Kerr's fault too. Yeah, man. you don't put Ant in that role if, if no. he if he is the third best scorer mm-hmm. on your team. You're in really good shape. Because he's going to go off for 30-plus points sometimes. And then other games, he's going to go off and have single digits. You know, I call the Andrew me, Wiggins effect. You know, remember like 2010, they had Eric Gordon. And Eric Gordon could put up 20 and a half like it was nothing. Yeah, he usually didn't score more than 30 in a game. But like any given half, he'll put up 20. Yeah. Um, I just felt like that, was, that, that should have been his role. But obviously, they had a little bit of a lack of talent. But still, <laughs> if they had one like, came out and they built it around... Um, just basically a similar roster, but built it differently. The on-court product was different, where it was Mikhail Bridges, Austin Reeves. The ball was yeah. all about moving the ball. Um, yeah. You throw in um, Tyrese Caliburton. In there, put a little bit of um, Halley Hezzy in there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And but like, you, you say, like, Ant, we want you to be the man. And then when he hits against a, a roadblock, which is inevitable unless – you can shoot over top of defenses in FIBA, which very few people can because how far they can extend out those really good zones. Yeah. Like Kevin Durant did it in 2010. He could just he could just kill those. But we knew Ant was gonna wasn't gonna be able to do that. Yeah. Like it just he doesn't have that level of like shooting ability. So then it's like, what are you gonna do? Like dunk it every time? Well, you yeah. just can't do that in FIBA no. either. And and I think that's why it's important to have shooters out there in, in a game that demands you to have shooters. Like Thank you, Moani. Uh, I, I just, I, I struggle with Grant Hill. Um, and you know, he's a great basketball mind and I'm never going to challenge his mind versus my mind, but I struggle at when he put this together, because in a way, if he had gone back to, let's just say he drew a line in the sand saying, I'm not going to allow anybody on this team USA, uh, that's a rookie. All right. So he goes second year, third year, and fourth years, right? He could have had a better team with second, third, and fourth year players. Just a better team. That means Dude. Chet wouldn't have been on the team. What but about, that that would have no been Bobby Portis, bro. What's that? No Bobby Portis. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Is that like if he had just gone straight to the young American players coming up and being stars and stuff like that? Guess what would have happened? You would have found out something that would have been shocking. You would mm-hmm. have found out something that people would have stood there and been like, "Okay, yeah." yeah. And you know what would have happened? The Team USA would have got to the championship game mm-hmm. because it, it's something when you have people like um, ants. And uh, what was that guy that was supposed to play skinny guy, uh, Brendan Ingram? You know, you have these guys that just quit, you know, that That's mentality cool. that they just quit. Like, Jaron Jackson just quit. Yeah, like you can't like to me, like there's there's a, 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 a part in the sand where I'm like, 
Austin Reeves is the perfect mentality to have out there, mm -hmm. right? Hallie the Hizzy needs to be out there, right? Mm -hmm. You have these guys that have this mentality that's proper, that's right. And you're saying, yes, that's what we need in the Team USA. And then you went, Ew. and the rest of the guys brought you off course and it brought you down. He had the first few picks right and just went wild afterwards. And I think, well, I think that he if picked Ant first. And I think that was where it went off. But you're right, dude. When you talk about, when you talk about the team, and you mentioned those guys, they're all second, third, and fourth year players who have, who have really had success. And honestly, the guy that we haven't mentioned is Paulo. Paulo had a very good time. Like, it would have been great to see him. If you're going to get fourth place anywhere, yeah. put him in a spot where he's the man. Yeah. That, then at least you're building toward the future of Team USA. That's but it. That's what it is. Thinks Ant is going to be on the like Olympic team. No. Like, I mean, I'm, I guess they might give it to him out of respect for what he did. And then he showed up and played in the third place game when a lot of people didn't which was embarrassing for Team USA. But we said it when the team was picked. That this wasn't just going to be like one of those things that was like, oh, yeah, the team went and represented the country. Well, it was going to embarrass the country. And, well, and they did. They thoroughly did. Ah, oh, this was, makes me so excited about the season, man. This is why it makes me so excited about the season. Sam Presti talks about it in every press conference that he gets involved, that talks about the Oklahoma City Thunder and picking a right team, picking the right mindset. Picking players that truly care about winning and championships. Shay, like he looked happy they won against Team USA, but he truly was not happy. You could tell that bronze just wasn't good enough. Just wasn't. In the team photo, he didn't even put the, the, the uh, medal on. He didn't put it around his neck in the team photo. You know, like, to me, he's saying the bronze is not good enough. And to me, when you're building a team and you have a team and you're building it and Sam Presti's sitting there watching Team USA as they crumble, right? There's no way in his mind he's saying, that's why I'm glad I have Chet. That's why I'm glad I have Jada. That's why I'm glad I have Jay Will. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm glad I have Shay, Dort, Josh, Jack White. You know, like, yeah. that's why I'm so glad I have all these guys because... These guys, these mentalities, these, these ideas of how to play hoops and how to have the right mentality, how to bring what it takes to the table is why this team is going to be special this year. Why this team is going to far exceed anybody that's a professional that's looking at this team saying, this is where Oklahoma City Thunder cap is. They will not win above this game. They will exceed those guys. And that's why it's powerful. You cannot build a team that cares about winning this much. And all of a sudden say, oh, yeah, they're going to be content with winning 45 games. Preach it. Just truth, man. SGA over Ant, J-Dub over Ant, Chet over Ant, Josh Giddy over Ant. I would pick any of those guys over Ant every single day without even blinking. And it's just because it's something special right here. It takes. You know, J-Dub has that, 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 that spark of I'm going to fuck you up. Shea has that. I'm going to fuck you up on my way to the hole. I don't give a shit how hard I dunk it on you. Ant has that, you know, angry person play, right? But if he doesn't get to that level, he never, you know, dominates like that. It, it, it takes something special to be able to have that right away. The second the ball goes up in the air, boom, I get into that mode. It's that wolf mode, man. People call it dog mode. I call it wolf right. mode. Well, and the thing is, like, Ant can get on fire. We've seen it, right? Like, and when he starts hitting that, that three on the perimeter, like, God damn it, he's basically unstoppable because of how quick and athletic he is. It's, we have a lot of respect for Ant's, like, um, ability, but it's, it kind of lends itself a little bit in that um, highlight real stuff versus, like, actual true killing it. But if he, mm. say he got to the point where he was, like, Steph from the perimeter. Yeah, sure. Right? With his athletic ability, he could be the greatest player of all time. If he could get to the point where he was just knocking down those, but I'm like, at the, at the same time, like, that's not going to happen. I mean, unless, you know, something like, but here's the thing. I didn't think Brooke Lopez would become an elite three-point shooter. Like, you never know who's going to figure it out. But like Ant's ability, it seems like sometimes people who can be so dominant off the dribble, like they just, it's hard for them to really, really hone the level of their game on the perimeter. Example, like R.J. Barrett. Lance you know Stevenson. what I mean? Lance you know? Stevenson. That's, you know, like, and then when you get a little bit older as your career starts going, like Russ, yep. all of a sudden, 
it's harder to do the same things, but you still like people are counting on you to go out and do those things and it becomes difficult. And then sure. what? You still can't just hit what? three. So teams are already been playing off of you. Then what? I, I always look at it like this. Year one is always your first year of making mistakes. People start getting a little bit of film on you. Year two, you make your changes. Year three, you start becoming that player you're becoming. Year four, now you're the player you're becoming, right? And everybody has film on how to stop you. You know, like, I, I'm sorry, but like what the FIBA did to Ant out there is exactly how every NBA team is going to play Ant from now on. And it is going to be, there it is. Like, that is how you're going to play in. And, like, when he's starting to shut you guys down, you're going to do this. And boom, he's done. Like, that's the thing is, like, people always talk about winning in, in, in the playoffs. And, and I talk about the Oklahoma City Thunder so much is that winning in the playoffs takes a special it. Right? What is that it? Well, it's that next gear. Your first gear, your second gear, it gets cut out. People cut that shit out every single time in the playoffs. They say, we're not going to give him that. That's taken away every single time. The players that dominate find that next gear, that third gear, that fourth gear to add to their game, to make it impossible for them to stop. It's the Michael Jordans and the, say what you want. Jimmy Butler has figured that shit out. You know, um, Mer um, Curry has figured that shit out. You know, like these guys that have been there a lot have figured it out. And that's all I'm saying is I see that in Shea. You know, I see that like, when they got beat by Serbia, it hurt. He doesn't like that feeling. And he's like, ew, get away from me. What is that feeling? I hate that. It's called losing, motherfuckers. Let's not do that anymore. And that's what Shea is going to bring to this table. And especially when he gets to the playoffs, man, and, and you're letting the wolf loose, man. And instead of being, you know, okay, guys, it's fourth quarter. I'm going to turn it on now because I have to, right? It's going to be like that all game long. You know, you talked about it last episode and you said something about uh, Michael Jordan getting into that playoff game and putting up 60. And before that, he never ever put up that much points. And he came back the next year and everybody was whispering about him being one of the greatest. You know, and that's what Shea is going to be capable of doing. He's going to go up and he's going to put up 40 points this year a couple of times, maybe put up 50 points. But when it comes to the playoffs and he figures out how to play in that fourth quarter, in that third quarter consistently all game long, it's that next gear that he's, he's going to have to step up to. It's, it's going to be beautiful. We're all going to sit here and be like, hell yeah, hell yeah. You know, like trying to get into the Oklahoma City games because everybody's going to be like, I wish I had gone and seen them play. You know, like I, I'm serious. Like think about it, guys. Atlanta Braves, any team that is a young team that no one gives them a chance and they have the right team combined, they have the right mentality, they have the right coaches, they have the right managers. What happens? They fuck around. They surprise everybody. What up, Shane? And they do some crazy shit. And that's what the Oklahoma City Thunder is going to do. And that's why Mark and I are here. Going to be back. When are we going back, Mark? You want to get back tomorrow, bro? Let's get back tomorrow, guys. Yo, man. I hope you guys are as excited as we are. I know Jaden, Moani, Shane, you are. Um, Jaden, your question about the final cut. I'm sorry to like do this, but we got to cut the question. Um, because it hurts too much to talk about. Um, I don't like being punched in the nuts, bro. I'm sorry. I, I'm just going to have to like, let it go. <clears throat> like, it's hard because when I think about the guys that are at the end of the roster, like I'm emotionally connected to them. So Absolutely, I, I hate playing this game when they do get like cut or traded or whatever, it's going to hurt, but we'll move on. But I just, I can't. We rip the bandaid off when it comes. Let's like, do it. I was crushed from Lindy Waters wasn't resigned. oh dude i know and you were like I, he really fucked me he, up bro i was like yeah you're like he can come back dude and i was like i was just like you are so fucking delusional you don't cut a two-player two-way player and then bring him back and i was just like hey but hey you're connected to him so and you wished it into happening That's so it, man nothing is is final and we're hoping for the best for all these guys we love you guys see you guys soon